Good morning. Yes, it is a different service. About this time, Michael would be asking you to just uh, sink into your seats and take a deep breath, and we would be going into preparation for prayer. But this service is just going to be about prayer. In fact, it's going to be a prayer. So we're going to pray. <gasps> Imagine that. A spiritual center praying. <laughs> well, I, I, just, I, I think we do this maybe two times a year. Beverly, two times a year maybe? I think it's important because I definitely believe in the power of prayer, but I don't believe that prayer changes God or the universe or whatever you want to ch call it. I believe that it changes myself so that I am more receptive to what wants to happen. Because what wants to happen is... Um, is a sustaining of creation. I, 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 I'm going, I bought a book called The New Testament of World Religions. It hasn't come in yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's the perennial philosophy behind all great religions. And a lot of times I will just read the title to a book and get enough, you know. So, um, you know. Even a rock can tell you the truth. I think there was something, a book like that. Even the rock can hold the truth. That's all I had to read. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. Ooh, rocks. And sometimes I'll read a little bit about the book and that's enough. But this particular book, I think I really want to read the whole thing. And I'm going to share a little bit about that with you. But before I share with you uh, what I think about this particular, about what we teach and how it applies to all world religions, I want to just share with you a little bit about what I know about Hinduism and why I believe the, in prayer. See, in Hindu, Hinduism, there's a trinity. There's, there's God as creator, God as sustainer, and God as destroyer. Now, it doesn't just destroy willy-nilly. It destroys that which has served its purpose. And what I love about the universe and nature is that once something has served its purpose, it can dissolve and, and go on. Life goes on. After the seed has done its purpose, it dissolves into the ground because it's already hosted a plant coming out of it. I think it's only, only humans that hang on to things that are past their purpose and prime. So, I, I really understand why in Hinduism, they worship the aspect of God that destroys things and lets them go so new stuff can spring forward. So there's Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the sustainer, and Shiva, the destroyer, and all of, them, all of it is important. But I wanna talk about Vishnu, the sustainer. So if something is created, it's created for a purpose, and therefore, the Hindus would believe that it's also sustained until the, it reaches the, the fulfillment of that purpose. And then it moves on. Then there's another stage. So I believe that when we're praying, when I'm praying, I'm actually allowing myself to move into harmony with that which wants to sustain, sustain me as an expression. And so let me get back to this. What we teach is a perennial philosophy. Who's heard that term before? Some of you philosophy majors, maybe. Perennial philosophy is the idea that shows up in all major world religions, and it shows up on every continent, and it shows up in as far back as we can have recorded history. And there's four ideas to the perennial philosophy. I'll share three of them with you, two of them with you. The first one is, all life rises in and is an expression of a non-dual infinite life that is called by many names. You can call it ultimate reality, God, Tao, Mama, Mother, be respectful, Mother, Allah, Jehovah, Brahma, Great Spirit, Great Enchilada, whatever you wanna say. That's the first idea in the perennial philosophy. The second one is that you contain two ways of knowing the world. A greater knowing, which is called your soul or yourself or your spirit or your mind, all capitalized, because it's eternal, along with a host of other names, that intuitively knows each, in, each finite life is a unique manifestation of the infinite life. And then there's a lesser way of knowing, which is called self, ego, none of this is capitalized, and the like, 
that mistakes uniqueness for separateness and imagines itself apart rather than part of the infinite life. Does that? So those are two ideas in the perennial philosophy that just keeps showing up. So when we're praying, what we're doing is we're moving into the idea that if there's an infinite life going on, I'm a part of it. And if it came to be, I can imagine that there's something that also wants to express and support that continual expression of being. And, that, and so this is my, my take on it. Each and every one of you were a good idea in the mind of God. Each and every one of you were a really good idea in the mind of God. That's just how it is. God wanted to make sculptures. And he decided that art was a good idea. So Jonathan came to be. Yay, yay. And then there was this idea of, of um, God had an idea that real estate should be harmonious and equitable for all and should be done with grace. And so Evianita came to be. And then God said, you know, I really like to talk and I like to talk a lot and I like to be right. <laughs> and why are you laughing? <laughs> and I have a, and God had a comic sense of humor with a deep desire to express itself as God and so Kathy Ann came to be. So all of you that are, if you're sitting here and everyone that hasn't, you are a divine idea in the mind of God, creator, Brahma, said, let there be, and you are. And Vishnu says, and I shall sustain and maintain that until it has fulfilled its purpose. And when you have fulfilled your purpose, then wonderful aspect of, of destroyer, but not, of course, essence, because essence can't be destroyed, but form will be let go of by Shiva. Now, if you're wondering if you're still on purpose, if you're here, you still are. Isn't that easy? So the universe is not done with you. So in law, as long as the universe is not done with you, you might as well flourish in what you're doing. So that's the essence of prayer as we teach it. It's not to change the universe. It's to allow the universe to do more fully through us what it is designed to do, which is sustain and maintain and flourish as creation, according to Vishnu. Hinduism. Actually, I'm so into this eight, the eight major world religions and how we really do incorporate all of them that I'm, I, I, I've got to do a talk on it. Too bad so many of these talks are planned for the end of the year. We might just have to do something else. But I have, it's, I'm just on it. There's a divine idea. I must do this. So, 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 we are going to pray today. And let me tell you a little bit about how that will work. Um, prayer is a function of us focusing our thoughts instead of our thoughts running away with us. So we're focusing our thoughts on higher ideals, deals, higher ideals, and higher ideas, and letting those thoughts lift us up into a more expansive consciousness, and then focusing our thought on what we want, instead of letting our other thoughts take us down various rabbit holes. How many of you have done that? We're going to focus on life-enhancing thoughts and letting life-enhancing thoughts not only, um, we're not only going to focus on those, we're going to let those even more life-enhancing thoughts emerge from us because what we contemplate, we become, according to Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
So, the way that this will happen, the way that I, this will unfold, is that we're going to think on universal truths. We're going to think about what we think God is. And we're going to think the highest thought that we have about God. The highest thought that you have about God, we're going to start thinking about that. And as we start to think on those things and allow ourselves to rest on those ideas, we will then begin to feel that we are one with those ideas. So we'll know that God is, and therefore I am, because a univer uh, one of those principles of the uh, perennial philosophy is that there's one life. Ernest Holmes didn't make that up, he just said it. There's one life, and if that life is true here, then that life is true here. So. I am like a drop in the ocean. I may not have the full force of the ocean, but anything that is true of the ocean is true of that drop. So anything that's true of God is true of me. All of the chemicals that are in the ocean are in every drop. All of the aspects of God that are in the universe are in you to the degree that you want to own them. So that's what we'll be doing in this. So God is and I am. And from that place, of shifting your I am from, um, do, how, many of you, how many of you use I am in a not so powerful way at times? <laughs> well, we're gonna shift that I am to a more powerful expression of that I am. And when we move into a more powerful expression of that I am, then we can say, let there be, because that's what the universe does. It creates. And we're gonna create from what we desire, not from what we want to fix. Does that making sense? Okay, so then after that, we're gonna just rest in it. And let it live in us. We're gonna see the result we want. We're gonna feel the result we want. We're going to imagine that it is given unto us. And we're going to move into a sense of gratitude. <sighs> and then let it go. I was reading about one of the ceremonies that they have in um, uh, Tibetan Buddhism where they make a sand mandala, spend weeks intricately coloring and designing that mandala. And after it's perfect, they sweep it away. And I, I was already imagining, well, bef why can't we just put plastic over it? <laughs> or some, somehow put something on it to make it solid, and yet that's not the, the idea. It's that everything needs to move. Prayers need to move. We need to pray, pray and then we let it go. And we let the universe do what the universe does, which is create and sustain and maintain, and then move on. I'm really, 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 really um, in love with the power of prayer. The more I do it, the more I love doing it. The more I pray, the more I see the effects of those prayers. There's studies that are out that say that prayer is are more highly effective than most of the drugs given to patients for illness. More highly effective than most drugs without the side effects. Oh, it does have side effects. I must warn you, prayer will change your life. You will have increased peace of mind. You will have a brighter outlook. You'll have reduced worry and outbursts of joy. So watch it. Prayer works, and we're going to do it. Now. We're going to begin by working it now. Let's just take a deep breath. Breath. And I want you to feel what prayer does. I want you to feel what happens when we shift our attention. So let's begin by deciding what we're going to pray about. What in your life? Would you like to have flourish? 
See, sometimes we go to God or we go to the universe with what we want to have fixed. Well, real, real prayer is the request to have something emerge from us, to have something flourish in us. It's not fixing. Instead, it's lifting. So if you have debt problems, what you want to have flourish is abundance of income. If you have a broken heart, what you want to have flourish is a heart filled with love and joy. If you are wondering what to do next with your life, what you want to have flourish is intelligence and wisdom. If you're feeling alone, what you want to have flourish is the sense of community and friendship and, and connection. So when you know what you want to accept, what you want to have flourish in your life, simply raise your hand. What is it that you want? Maybe for you, it may be for the world. Maybe what you would like to have flourish is more peace and more cooperation. Maybe what you'd like to have flourish is more shared resources. So now, just try this on. I want you to look down at your feet, or right, be, right in front of your feet. I want you to look down on the floor in front of you and think about, think about the thing that made you want to wish this thing. Maybe it was the debt or the broken heart or the lack of cooperation and think about what that's like. Now notice what it does to your body. Notice what it does to your thinking and how you breathe. Now take a very deep breath in. Exhale. Leave that and lift your head up. Lift your chin up slightly. Look up slightly, about 45 degrees. Let your eyes soften. In the Old Testament, it said, Look unto the hills, from whence cometh thou salvation? That was a metaphor for look to a higher consciousness. And from that higher consciousness, you will be delivered words and ideas that will save you from your former experience. Look to those words now. Look to God. Look to universal principles. And allow yourself to contemplate the highest name, the highest idea that you have for God. The very highest. It could be love, intelligence, connection, infinite variety, everlasting life, opulent abundance. Worlds without end. Opportunities without end. So just allow yourself to rest, to look up, and to complete this sentence. Complete it silently in your mind. God is. God is. God is, God is, God is, fill in the blank. That's God calling because we've called God, isn't that lovely? <laughs> one ringy-dingy, one ringy-dingy. We will accept that call. What's so great about God is it never does reverse charges. 
we just allow ourselves to think of God. Rest in God. Look up and think on high thoughts. And from now on, the service will unfold as a song, as a prayer, as movement, as dance. Become as involved as you can. Sing the words if you know them. Try to sing the words if you don't know them. Let the words and the music open your mind to begin to perceive what's already going on because what's already going on is we're already connected. We have always been connected. It is only a part of our small self that says we're different. It's only a part of our small self that says it's you and it's me where God says it's us. So let everything be an opening for a perception of what is eternally real and everlastingly true. Breathe into that. Know that. We won't applaud. We'll just go from song to prayer to prayer to song. And we begin with God is. God is. God is.
never speak peace All because of the love that's got a hold Lift your eyes. So many of us know all the problems of the world and we know how others should act. We know what our leaders should be doing. We know how the winds should be blowing. We know how we should have done it. We know how they should have done it. And we haven't known the very essence of goodness. So lift your eyes and know that whatever God is, it has to be good. There is no duality. There is a non-dual existence. It does not fight with itself. It is not at odds with itself. It holds all, embraces all, sustains all. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation. There is no request to suffer. There is only divine givingness. Let us look unto that and know that all that we would know of God is true of ourself. So whatever we have called God, whether we've called it life or intelligence, if we've called it power or abundance, if we've called it sufficiency, if we've called it truth, if we've called it substance, all that we would know of it is true of us. It is the very essence of us. So join me now in this prayer. The way to do it is softly within yourself. Fill in the blank. God is, and I am. Whatever you say of God is true, is true of you. God is, I am. God is, I am. God is, I am. God is life and therefore life is the essence of myself. I am that life. God is truth, and therefore truth is the essence of what I am. I am that truth. God is love, and therefore that is the very essence of who I am. I am love. I am a magnet for love. I am an epicenter for love. I am intelligent showing up. I speak intelligently. I think intelligently. I can hold all sorts of ideas at the same time because intelligence shows up as myself. So join me now, once again. God is, I am. God is, I am. I am one with the one. I cannot escape the one. I cannot be separate from the one. <laughs> I can't hide from the one. I can't run from the one. I can pretend I'm not one with the one, but I'm always one with the one. So I celebrate it. I surrender to it. 
and I let God be God in me, as me, and through me, proving its essence in all that I am, in all that I am. So allowing ourselves to recognize that new reality, that new definition of ourself, I am, I am life, I am truth, I am sufficient, I am intelligent, I am abundant, I am loving because I am love itself. As we allow ourselves to see that, to recognize that, We declare into an existence a new expression, a fuller expression of that I am self. I am now knowing. I am now experiencing. I am now fully embraced by. We allow all of that, all of that, all of that to be the word that will be made fresh and flesh to our eyes. What is it that you want to express? What is it that you want to claim for yourself? In your heart of hearts, claim that now. Put your hand over your heart and make a covenant to know that deeply. This is what I claim for myself. You're not asking to have anything fixed. You're asking instead, in fact, you're not even asking, you're accepting and declaring that this is your new expression. This is what I am willing to accept. And I let the part of the universe that sustains all of creation to sustain me by letting this flourish in me. Abundance flourishes in me. Love flourishes in me. Health flourishes in me. Creativity flourishes in me. Connection flourishes in me. Peace and well-being for all people flourishes in me. Opportunities and ideas flourish in me. Hold that. Hold that within yourself and see your new future as though it were already done. 
What we know is that human beings, so far as we know, are the only species with the capacity to imagine. Imagine it is done. Imagine this new life of flourishing. Imagine it now. Imagine it and feel it, see it, feel it. <sighs> Rest in it and know that if you are willing to accept it, the seed of it is with you now. The seed, the seed, the beginning is with you now. And the universe must bring about the fulfillment of this prayer. So rest, see, taste, hear, feel. It is done. It is now. It is yours. Real
And so when we know it's real, when we can feel it, when we can see it in our mind, it's real. <sighs> and that's the time when we move into the sense of gratitude, of thanksgiving. My Eckhart said that if the only prayer we ever gave was thank you, it would be enough. Because thank you has a connotation of being grateful, of appreciating what is so, of being reverent with the gift. It means it's done. It's been said in the Bible that it's done unto you as you believe. Perhaps it's done unto you as you are grateful. Because you're grateful because you believe. I love Louise Hay, she passed away last week, and she was a very wise woman and inspired me in so many ways, but she said something that I don't believe in. She said, the universe loves a grateful person. Nah, the universe loves every person. You can be a cranky pants and the universe still loves you. The universe doesn't say, I love these people because they're smiling and these people because they're not. No, the universe loves because that's what it is. We don't do gratitude for God. Gratitude is for us. It means that we appreciate what is so. We appreciate what is so in reality and what is so in the invisible that will become reality. So gratitude is so important. Eric Butterworth said, a grateful heart draws great things to it. Gratitude is a state of mind that says, I have. Jesus said, to those who have, more shall be given. To those who don't have, even that shall be taken from you. Ugh. Now that seems like a really hard teaching, but it's just a fact. It wasn't a curse. So imagine that in your hand is the seed for that which you have just claimed for yourself. Imagine that this is the seed. It's not the thing itself, but it is the seed and you are going to plant it in mind and mind will do the rest. The universe knows how to grow things. It knows how to grow people and trees and it knows how to grow ideas. So holding that, be grateful for that. And there will be a time you will wake up some morning and everything you see you'll be grateful for. You'll be grateful for the green and for the not green. You'll be grateful for the sun and for the clouds. And you'll be grateful for everything that you cast your eyes upon. And maybe that is heaven. Nothing changes and yet everything does. And that's what gratitude does. It opens our eyes to the abundance that we get to enjoy. And so if you choose, you can join me in just putting your hand on your heart and saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
I'm raising my eyes up into the heavens to just let our sound person know that you're not done. See, in a lot of traditions, movement and singing and chanting and prayer were synonymous. Sometimes in our Western culture, especially since many of us come from Northern European traditions, God bless us and forgive us. <laughs> we think that there's prayer and then there's something else. So when you have a prayer service, it's n we sometimes subdivide things. Now we're praying, now we're listening, now we're praying, now we're listening. No. What if it was all prayer? What if standing up and moving just a tiny bit we're part of the prayer. There's actually science that says that the right frontal lobe, which is which, what allows you to perceive unitive consciousness. It's always happening, we just don't perceive it. This part of our brain shuts down. One of the ways to open up that is to move and to say things over and over again, like chanting. Why do you think the rabbis go like this? They don't have a hurt back. What they got, is the willingness to know only God. So stand up. <laughs>